Uh, what's up guys, welcome to a new weekly vlog. Uh, we are in a booth in Portland. Anyways, we're at the Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show. I'm in the interior guts of the Born and Raised booth. Go take you guys around. Uh, we're just hanging out. They had a movie night last night, which was super cool. They uh, launched a new film called Brotherhood. And tonight, uh, we're gonna do a little podcast action. We did not do a booth this year. We just kind of came to uh, to hang out a little bit, but they did a great job setting up. We got the guys at EXO are back over here. We got Onyx and Hoyt over here. They got their game bags, a lot of apparel. Uh, there's the old the meat bags. We got a bunch of their calls and stuff here. And then they got a little bit of a stage right here. So they got seminars going on most most of the days. Looks like there's a turkey seminar that's going to happen here pretty shortly. And then uh, Casey and I are going to jump on and do a podcast at... Looks like we're going to do a podcast Q&A, 4 o'clock. So uh, if you guys have followed us long enough, you know we've become very good friends with these guys. We've done the Land of the Free series original, done Land of the Free 2.0. We've done a pile of steelhead fishing videos, and uh, it's been actually thinking about it. I want to say it's five years since our last collaborative elk hunt, which is hard to believe. So we were talking this uh, this last night, man. We gotta we gotta figure out how to get back out there and do another hunt together. Some of the more enjoyable hunts that we've ever done is with those guys. Just a riot, super good people. So, anyways, I'll give you a little bit more of a tour of the show. Casey should be showing up here at some point in time in the, in the next few hours. I would I want to kind of show you around. The Portland show is a little bit different. I grew up out here in Portland. The show hasn't changed a whole lot since I originally attended here with my dad as a little kid. There's a trout pond. There's a lot more fishing stuff compared to like the Salt Lake show, but got a good crowd. A lot of great folks in Pacific Northwest that have come out, support these guys and us over the years. And so uh, it's always fun to get back here to the old home stomping ground. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Trent Fisher here. He's gonna walk us through this. He hates this stuff because he's, he's a humble guy. He skull caps everything he shoots, no matter what. <laughs> We're, we're not lying. You're not too wrong, but it's, yeah, it's, yeah. But we got a couple things I want to show you. Yes. Trent, walk us through the details. Yeah, so we'll do, do we want to save the best for last? Okay, so we'll do my stuff first. We'll do the best last. So this is a cool buck that I killed this last year. Um, it's a Colorado buck. Cool thing about Colorado, and I think you guys have hunted uh, Colorado numbers of times. They have four seasons, so it's almost like if you hit the weather, you can kill them. You have a good chance at a nice buck. This was a one point draw. Really, really cool. So a lot of opportunity. Look at that thing. Yeah. Dude. It's a so cool, sweet. Heavy buck. Such a sweet buck. Really, really neat. And and you you, you have no intentions of, of mounting that buck? Zero. The cool thing about it was though is I did I was with Onyx. I was with Dylan from Onyx. And um, anyway, and he was like, You're 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 high if you don't cape that <laughs> buck out. And I said, I don't need the cape or nothing, but I did cape it out, or he caped it out actually, <laughs> and he used the cape on his buck, so okay. it was really, really cool. That's really cool. cool. So it got used. Okay, nice mule deer. Nice mule got, deer. So next? the other, yes. Yeah, so the other one is an elk. Excuse me, brother. Uh, yeah, super fortunate to shoot this bull. Look at this sucker. Years ago. Yeah, this is. This was. Um, anyway, limited draw tag. Got super fortunate. Had enough points to draw it in the state of Oregon and uh, was able to shoot this one. It took me 15 days to find this one, but finally found him and uh, anyway, a lot of teamwork. Real quick. A lot of teamwork. Look at that beast. Yeah, super heavy. Dude, how wide is that bull? 53 inches wide. 53 inches wide, yeah. that thing is a stud Oregon stud. bull. Good Oregon bull. Oh man, good so, as it gets. All right, so last but not least, the last one. The big one, the big one. So this is the one I'm super anxious about. So, Josh, you might want to see this too. This is Wyatt's buck. I did not shoot this. <laughs> Wyatt shot this. Uh, was able to take him this year on a youth tag. This is, this will be the state record fork and horn for, it's a blacktail. It's not a mule deer, this is a blacktail. 
Anyway, we're, I'm curious to have it scored here at the Portland show. Today is 60 days from the drying period. Nice. It's, that's today. So why it's going to come down, that's the reason he came, and he's going to get this scored. So I don't know exactly what it scores. I roughed it at 120, at 121 and some change, but I don't know. We'll see. So it would be cool to that if he had like a state record, that'd be really Oh, cool. man. So Dude, pretty awesome. That is so. a sweet blacktail buck. That's all I got, man. I'm, I'm not a I'm, a, I'm a man of few words. Okay, so I talked about it before. We haven't hunted with these guys for five years. Hard to believe. Everybody wants to know, Trent, when are we going on another elk hunt? How, how has it been five years? We got to do it this year. We have to figure it out. It this year. Myself and Casey, Trevor, Cody, Trent, we're all talking about it last night. And uh, we got to figure it out. Some of our favorite videos. Yeah, yeah, Quite no, and it's... it's I think people like to see us at oh, the because there is shenanigans. There are some shenanigans. So let us know in the comments, where should we go elk hunting with these guys? Pick the state. Maybe maybe that's where we're going to end up. Let us know. Uh, application season is upon us. We're applying everywhere. And uh, we got to figure out a plan because right now we, we don't really have one. Uh, we've got some commitment out of this guy right here. Check this out. Show some guys. stuff. Introduce yourself. My name's Trevor. Uh, big fan of uh, Hush. Yeah. And uh, one of my first tattoos right here, Fireball. Just inked up, man. Yes, sir. Yes, inked sir. That, big, is, uh, that is commitment. Big tattoo. So that man. was the first one, and then the rest of them followed? First, second, third, fourth. And then I have one right here, but you guys can't see that one. Yeah, you guys can't see that one. Whoa. Yes, sir. Family-friendly show. That's, that's commitment. If you don't have a fireball tattoo, what are you even doing with your life? <laughs> anyway, Casey, dude. When are you getting one? <laughs> I already got one, but I can't show you guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, also, guys, check, it, check out who we found or who came and found out. Come here. This puppy, we found him. Very good puppy. <laughs> Welcome Daniel back to the show. Hey guys. Yeah. Down here in Portland, checking it out, seeing all my friends. You guys have not seen Find A Way yet. You better go watch Find A Way. We took Daniel on a hunt three years ago? Three years now. Very first elk hunt. Took him to a really cool place in Nevada. Killed an awesome bull. That was cool, but dude, just getting to know Daniel way better. Um, I don't know if you guys know the story, but we know, we've known Daniel for 10 years it feels like. Daniel was one of those guys who would always comment on almost every video we posted, always positive comment. And so uh, we met him down here and me and Brian and Eric were talking, we're like, we gotta find a way to take Daniel on, it, on an elk hunt. He'd been on a couple hunts in the past year, yeah. duck hunting, but we're like, he always wanted to hunt elk. So we took Daniel on his first elk hunt. It was awesome, changed our lives. Uh, changed my life. Heck yeah. Where's your fireball tattoo though? What's that? Where's your fireball tattoo though? I haven't yet. Well, yeah, what's up, dude? You got some ink. Somewhere. Don't worry, I'll get one. <laughs> Heck yeah. Time for some new ink. What's so give us give us an update. What's new and exciting in your life since uh, uh we last checked in with you a few couple of years ago? Just a lot of working. I do security for Costco now. Nice. That's keeping me busy, do that full time. How's, how's the track chair? Doing good. I get it out a little bit, not as much as I would like to lately. Low mileage? Yeah, it's got a little money. Clean one owner. <laughs> Clean one owner. Clean one, one owner. <laughs> what did we talk about earlier? We got to get that sucker out. Yeah, got to get it back out, get in the mountains. Might have to, you know, I don't know, Case. Run it back. Should we run it back, guys? Should, Should we run it back? 2.0? What do you think? Find a way 2.0? Yeah. I'm in. Do it. Do it. It's, hap it's happening. All right, good to see you guys on the vlog. Keep watching. All right, guys, we are at the Onyx uh, little booth within the bigger Born and Raised booth. I'm with Dylan and Zach. They're going to walk us through a couple surprise little features. You guys are going to be some of the first people. Yeah. Probably the first. The first people to see these upcoming features on the app. And uh, we had to go through the approval chain at corporate. But we got the green light. So uh, I'm going to have them talk a little bit more about what this new feature is or features and now uh, they're gonna walk us through it so real quick we've got a couple new things out that are out live right now but a lot of people don't really know about them yet uh, it's a quick two finger line distance tool so I'll let you show it but essentially like all of us we, we drop lines to figure out distances whether it be like for shooting or blasting points whatever it is but then you have to create a line save it and then tap it delete it. it's just too many steps so uh, now, if you just tap the map with two fingers at the same time, you can move your fingers to the side, but keep them on on the screen and get like a really quick distance measure. So I used that a ton last season, um, but one of those that is out right now, just many people aren't using it. And then, so this is the new one. It's not out yet. Um, we don't have any exact timelines, but it should be here pretty soon. 
uh, Zach will demo it, but some really cool use cases. I know I could have personally used it a ton last season. It has a ton of use cases, but for example, you know, you shoot a buck or you shoot something, you know exactly the distance to it. Before you lose elevation, uh, you can really easily and quickly pinpoint on the map where that is by the location. Mark a waypoint, that way when you, uh, you know, maybe you're going down to the bottom of a drainage, you have to come up, everything looks different, and you'll have an exact waypoint right there. So Yeah, so we're going to re be replacing what I call flashlight mode. So press the button to snap on your location, and you press it again, and you, as you tilt your phone, it kind of shows you what's coming. So we're going to replace that with this new compass mode. Like I said, we don't know exactly when that one's going to be out, but probably, I would say, well, within the next few weeks to a month, potentially. Yeah. Yep. Phase one, we're going to do it, build it in phases, and so we'll be releasing to customers um, phase one, and then, you know, just keep iterating on it, making it better and better for y'all. All right, guys, so there you have it. Uh, a few new secret updates. One that you might have uh, just never used that's already available right now. If you have OnX, uh, you can check that out. If you haven't purchased OnX, what are you waiting for, guys? It's legitimately the single greatest tool we use on every hunt, every shed hunt. It's just, I mean, it goes with us everywhere. It's on our phone. You can use code HUSH, you can save 20%. And uh, honestly, if you haven't ever checked it out, you really should. Some of the stuff they continue to add to the app is just getting better and better and better. And if you become uh, an elite member, you have access to a lot of other cool resources and tools to help you prepare for the hunt, scout for the hunt, beyond uh, what the app offers you just out in the field. So stay tuned for more updates. There's a couple other little tricks up their sleeve we can't disclose yet, uh, but I can tell you I haven't seen it, a demo today. It's gonna be pretty incredible uh, in the near future. Yep. So that's all from the OnX booth. Uh, we'll catch you at the live podcast here coming up in about an hour. Boom. Boom. <laughs> that gets me every single time. Guys. Yeah, we're live. Yes, we're at the PDX, Portland, and uh, sports show, guys. And we've been doing these podcasts pretty much every day. This is coming in as one of our favorite because we've got some of our favorite friends here. Uh, we've got Hushin. Casey, Casey and Beam made the man. track. Act a little enthused, Brian. I need a little more out of you, bud. I'm going to need a little more, bud. I'm just waiting for you to take us down the road, you know? I'm giving you some time to open this up. Okay. It's good to be back in Oregon. Uh, yeah. Born and born and raised more or less in the Portland area, so I uh, got a lot of a lot of history here. It's always fun coming back to these shows, although it hasn't changed in at least the 30 years that it's been going on. You're not wrong. Pretty sure the same vendor in the same spot is still there from when I was a kid. The fish pond is still here. Nothing's changed. Did you but this, this location is uh, pretty ideal. Buy one pillow, get seven free. The pillow guy has been pillow around guy. a long time. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> no, I think, um, no, it's what we did, guys, when we put all this together, uh, a huge shout out to these guys, because what we did is we just, I called Casey and BMAC and said, hey, guys, was there any chance that um, Eric was busy, but is there any chance that you guys could come out? And both of them dropped what they're doing and came out just for this. Long ways, flights on planes, a lot of money involved. So, man, it's just... Can't say enough. We're getting reimbursed, right? Absolutely not. Now that I've got you here, that's what I told you. Yes. Right. Now that you're here, absolutely not. Yeah. Where do we send our expense reports? Yeah. <laughs> to Chase. Uh, Onyx. Onyx. <laughs> Onyx is a big sponsor. And so, yeah, I would do that. Dylan. Yeah. Dylan will cover it. So, no, but just thank you guys so much for coming out. And yeah, I think that's one thing like for Trent and I too. Um, BMAC and I met, I think, in like 2011, 2012, when I was doing Full Draw Film Tour. And he's like, hey, dude, there's this guy in Idaho that's got this thing on YouTube. You need to check it out. It's, it's Hushin with Levere. And it was Casey's. He was the first guy on YouTube showing hunting. And I'm like, yeah, but like YouTube's for like funny cat videos. You know, it wasn't, a, I thought, I didn't think a place for YouTube. And, and, and honestly, Casey paved the way for what YouTube is hunting. He was the very first person. And then Brian connected, got Eric involved, and the Hush side really paved the way to for us to see like, wow, you can actually put hunting content on YouTube. And, and if, it, if it wasn't for these two, we'd still be probably trying to make DVDs and pendle them in a little 10 by 10 spot. So I, yeah. I actually sent Cody a Facebook message suggesting exactly this. Like, hey, guys, probably maybe time to put the DVDs away and, I don't know, elevate to the next level of digital media. And uh, he, didn't, he didn't respond to me at all, actually. Uh, we didn't know each other quite well at the time. We were Facebook friends. Maybe it was MySpace. 
but nonetheless, uh, he, di he didn't re return my message yeah. until a later date. We all met at SHOT Show and uh, reconnected there. And then these guys invited us to come out and do a fishing trip here in Oregon. And so we took him up on the offer and uh, we, we finally, finally broke through. Got him to start up the Born and Raised YouTube channel on uh, the side of a river. Yeah. So and, I don't uh, the quote. rest has been history. These guys have yeah. crushed it. It's it's been a crazy ride, that's for sure. As far as from there, just looking at where it's come now, it's pretty pretty blessed, pretty special. And so I would say together, we've created this this path for people, anybody to go and do it. Really, you know, I always tell people that they're like, oh, I'm thinking about like filming my hunt, hunts. What do you think? I'm like, why aren't you doing it? Everyone has a camera. Everyone has a phone in their pocket. And if the last thing that you obtain by it is just entertainment for you and your family, like how cool is that? I've always said like looking at old pictures of my dad with his dad hunting and his brothers are the coolest pictures of all time. Imagine having that in a film format for your kids and grandkids at a later time. And so, you know, we've obviously been able to monetize it. But, you know, if people ask me, like, should I hunt, film my hunts? I'm like, hell yeah, you should film your hunts just so you have that for yourself and, and for, you know, your family. And the same goes for the hunting, right? Like, if, you, if you've got the same old stomping grounds and you're like, man, it's not what it used to be, like, there's places out there that may be better, maybe out of state. Um, it's a daunting task to think about going out of state, like thinking about going to the Oregon coast from Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. Be a scary thing, but you go do it the first year. It, we always, I always talk about the analogy of, like, you live in a box, right? Your box is about this big. You go into the discomfort zone, you're, you're uncomfortable, but now all of a sudden your box gets a little bit bigger, life gets a little bit fuller. Every time that you go push yourself and feel uncomfortable and push those boundaries, the next time you're in that comfort zone, you, now you can go for something bigger and better. And you just all of a sudden live in a bigger container instead of this smaller box. Inspirational podcast is what this turned into. And in apparently so. We knew. In we knew we were doing a TED Talk. I have a yeah. dream. I have a dream. <laughs> Oh, so let's get to what people probably want to hear about. When are we hunting together and what are we doing? That's kind of what I want to know. Yeah. Ch joke's on you, Trent. Uh, it's going to be on me. Okay. What, what are we doing? <laughs> what do you, what would you guys, as far as, uh, as far as like to see us, we did, we used to do the fishing things, which are super fun. Um, hunting wise, what would you guys like to see us do? What's that? Bull, Bull elk. elk. Okay. Show hands for elk hunting. Yeah, man. Elk. I mean, I'm with you guys 100%. I like elk hunting. I, 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 we could do more of that. Archery. What about rifle? Okay. Ar archery wins. Did it, though? Hey, I had my hand hey, up. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the mi minority of the group, but bulls of the spring, we can chase some turkeys really easy oh, coming up. Oh, oh boy. Oh, yeah. Boy. Hey. Oh, boy. <laughs> Syracuse and waterfowl. Oh, Let's, boy. I mean, maybe later. Okay, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll come turkey out. Yeah, see, you're All starting right, to okay. lose them. You're starting to lose them, Cody. <laughs> turkey out. Goodness gracious. Great. That's great. <laughs> thank, you. Oh, thank you so much, guys. As soon as you thank said turkeys, you. the uh, people yeah. are leaving, Cody. Half the audience. Well, so, you want to open it up to the audience for questions? I think we should do that. Yeah, let's answer. Let's try to answer some questions. Go ahead, right there. Do you guys feel like you might be coming to a point where you become a victim of your own success when it comes to hunting? Because I know I started archery elk hunting in Oregon in 85, and we were ready to move areas if we ran into two other hunters. Yeah. Now, if we can find an open camp spot, we're happy. And I understand because, like, you know, I've been, you know, consuming the media with sure. the old Larry D. Jones tapes to watch it, to learn. And we were doing all this stuff. And, you know, I cut the cable in 12 and have been watching YouTube, you know, in two, since 2012 for hunting and fishing. And sure. I had on X early on, I was doing all these things that now everybody's doing. And it's getting where the, every, the woods are getting pounded. Right. You know, and it's like archery season looks like what rifle season looks like. Right. So do you guys feel that this is going to start affecting you? I think it's a great because question. Because it's affected my hunting. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I think it's, uh, it's a great question. And I think it's mind frame. Like, it, it, if, you, if you take it out of it, and all these guys are the same way, like, we'll take five guys in the woods, and there's only one guy with a tag. 
because we don't want the, the best for him. We want him to succeed. And so we put out all these DVDs, well, it used to be DVDs, but videos now, and on YouTube to help somebody else. When I hear of somebody actually succeeding because of maybe something that we did or using our calls and harvested an animal or something, I, I'm jacked up about that. And if somebody gets their kids off the couch and off the video games and goes out in the woods, I'm super, super excited about that. And so you can look at it two different ways. You can look at it as these woods are so crowded, or you can look at it as, man, if we inspired anybody to get out there and do that, that's awesome. You know, they're experiencing it. They're doing it, you know? And so it, it's, it's one of those things, in my opinion, it's like glass half full kind of things, right? It's, it's, you can look at a lot of things in a certain perspective, but I think we need to be happy for them to be out there at the same time. It, and the next side of it's like strength in numbers, right? We're, yeah. we're under attack from the anti-hunters at every corner. I mean, Washington lost their spring bear season. Um, I mean, 114 here in Oregon. It, it's just, it's some of those things, if we don't unite and have the youth involved, have, have the next generation, like I want the opportunity for my grandson to, to have an opportunity to buy an archery elk tag in Oregon. Um, so it, it is, you know, I mean, we, we try our best. And, and honestly, like in 2018, we went back to Colorado. I was back country hunting. I ran into 12 people off trail deep in the wilderness. All 12 of those people watched Land of the Free. They drove from Ohio, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and they experienced something that they thought was never achievable. I was not bummed out at all. Like the hunting was tough. It was challenging, but I was inspired by what they, they put out the effort. So, I mean, with that, it's, it's definitely, um, it's challenging. Like, like Trent said, half glass, half full on it. I have a question. Um, Trent, can you unbutton your shirt anymore? <laughs> <laughs> it's called the deep, deep V. <laughs> Did you, I appreciate that. That's so what I'm talking about. I appreciate that. Finally, we got. Why are you throwing up the crab shirt? Mike right? does not crab, need that. You see my crab shirt? Oh, you got yeah. a crab shirt on. Yeah, yeah. yeah his crab shirt. I usually shirt. charge double for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just joking. They are gonna. We are gonna hunt again together. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a it's a double edged sword. You know, you you can hunt all together and maybe have one person holding the tag, or you can try to divide and conquer, get and get more content. So again, it's a balance. We love hunting. You know, even our, with our own team at Hush, like we love all getting out, but it's difficult because then we're, we only have like maybe one hunt where we could have produced three or four. So it's a balance there. And then obviously, you know, the relationship with us and born and raised guys, uh, it's it's hard. It's crazy to think back. Land of the Free 1 is, uh, is six years old now. And Land of the Free 2 is five years old. And that was the last time we hunted together. Five years. I mean, wild how fast it's gone. But uh, yeah, we, we had a pretty long talk last night. Like, all right. Five years is long enough. Like, let's figure this out. Yeah. Well, cool, guys. If there's nothing else, we just want to uh, say thank you so much to you guys and to these two guys for coming with us. And, man, really appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Really Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks thank for you coming, guys. guys. Thank you. Well, this is me and B Mackle. B Mackle is talking to the folks, um, signing off from the Portland Expo this year. If you guys came down and said hi to us or Born and Race, thank you. Thanks for supporting the the bro crew thanks for coming and saying hi we just got done doing a podcast with the bro crew um it was live and they have their own like studio here in the in the uh booth this year but listen if you've never been to the portland show think about coming it's it's a good time a lot of sea a lot of cool people like this guy uh has the deepest v of all the v's i've ever seen look at this hold what? on what people want to know how deep it goes get, well let's give the people what it, they want it keeps going let's give the people what they want do you know the dates of this next year yeah dates of this show yes are they the same as Salt Lake or no yeah it's in 2024 okay so it's in 2024 what I was going to say is no idea we might bring a booth next year Dude. to the show what would what you, you guys think? think? Comment below. Would you guys like to see us in Salt Lake with you guys and then you guys in our booth at Portland? I think that's how it works. It would be so fun. It would be so fun. Yeah, so comment below. If uh, we should do a collaborative booth next year. Yeah. Hush, born and raised in both Salt Lake and Portland. Yeah, and maybe a secret Casey, uh, Trent, Hunt, oh, no, 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 in between. Oh, yeah. Between. You, you guys are going to see what's going on here shortly. Yeah about collabs are back baby collabs are back anyways you guys came by and said hi to the born and raised court crew thank you Dude, tell them thank you thank you so much you and b-man coming man it would just mean the world to us just to um yeah ask you guys and you guys were 
Super, super awesome coming out. Well, I really you know it doesn't take much to get me to come out here and, and support you guys. So, you. You. anyways, if you guys came by and said hi to the Born and Race crew, thank you. If you bought some merch, thank you. You came by and watched our live podcast, thank, just thank you to everyone, really. Fucking hell for love. Hell for love. Hell for love. Signing off here from Portland. Put your love hand over the, the thing now. Love you guys. Thank coming you, in man. hot. Coming in hot. There. there. Safety first. Still getting used to this old reverse camera. <laughs> I remember when uh, years ago BMAC had fancy truck. One of the first ones I had seen with one of these reverse cameras, and I was like, "So do you just like put all your trust in the reverse camera?" It's like, "Yeah, man." I'm like, a part of me was just like, "What if there's something it doesn't see? You know, like an object or another car?" But anyways, put all my trust in the reverse camera, guys. Welcome back to my portion of the Hush Life vlog. We have, we have Matt seat without belt. a seatbelt. That's what we've got. That's not a crazy annoying sound. Oh man, it's worse. Dude, these new trucks have more buttons and dings and beeps. Like I'll take, I'll do one hand and suddenly be like flashing, and I'm just like, dude, what is going on? <laughs> and it's like got an image there. Hands on wheel, like ten and two, ten and two. So it is kind of annoying. Heck, if anybody knows the secret cheat codes on how to like remove some of those things, let me know. But yeah, back on the Hush Life vlog, we've got something out of the ordinary in some ways today for my portion. We've got these new tech hoodies that are coming out on the website and the mobile app fairly soon. So the program when we do some of these new custom apparel is we get samples first. We have talked about the hoodies for quite some time, but we finally finalize the hoodie and then the next step after finalizing it is actually getting some prototypes or pretty much finished products in our hands so we can pass them out through the group and everybody can wear them and just double check everything, the quality, the stitching, the fit, etc. And after that phase, we will place that order and get them in. So we are scheduled to get these in in April. Stay tuned for that announcement. But we're going to go take some photos of the tech hoodie in my buddy's gym. His name is Bronson Butler. Same last name as Casey. I uh, wonder if they're like distant relatives. Matt actually knows him through the wrestling scene. Um, he's a big bodybuilder guy. I know him from the gym life and some of the stuff I've done, like fitness shows years ago. And we've stayed in touch because he is a hunter, like big time hunter. So we're going down to his gym, you guys. We'll give you a quick tour, it's pretty cool. It's like more like the underground style gym. Um, it's not one of the big box gyms. And we're gonna take some video of the hoodies and get some pictures and just do all the behind the scenes stuff that goes on at Hush that you guys probably don't always get to see. So let's go. Okay, we made it to the gym real quick. You'll see these inside, but three colors of our tech hoodie, like an olive drab, military green, a really turquoise color great for the summertime stuff and then like a stone gray and then we also brought some goodies back here hand me those mount ox so you guys are probably familiar i mean we've only talked about it a bazillion times but the mountain ops ignite lemonade flavor number one flavor of all times i don't know if you guys know this or not but it comes in the yeti pre-workout which is what i'm going to be downing and then it also comes in the Enduro. So if you shop on the Hush website, use the Hush code each time. At a minimum, it's going to give you free shipping. And just so you're aware, we've got those different products. And also the Ignite comes in trail packs. And they just launched creatine monohydrate. I've used this stuff for years. Um, obviously using different brands along the way. And I was so happy to see that Mountain Ops dropped their own creatine. Right, guys we wrangled up uh bronson like i said he's a big hunter himself his family family's a big hunting family this is his gym man this is like his baby he's been building it for i don't know how long but it seems like every time i come here there's a new addition 
And uh, the most recent two are like this aisle. I don't know what you call these bays maybe, but yeah. an entire new bay. The third section has an entire new bay new to me, but we wanted to give you guys a quick tour and let Bronson kind of tell you a little bit about this place. And heck, it's right here in Salt Lake City. Is it considered West Valley? Yeah, we're right on the corner, so it's kind of where we can be considered West Valley, South Salt Lake, or just Salt Lake. Okay, that's what, kind of what I thought. That's how my house is, but yeah. This is Bronson Butler. We've known each other for years back when I competed. And <laughs> yeah. He's kept that lifestyle moving forward, and just like I have with the hunting stuff, and it's been cool to see him also turn his passion into business. And um, Anyways, I'll let Bronson run with it and in introduce you guys to the gym, and we'll give you guys a quick tour as well. Come on over. So we started uh, 2019, we started in just this bay right here, and it being the bodybuilding gym in Utah, more of the competitor's gym, it shot up pretty fast. I'll bet. So we flipped the revenue that it made every single month into trying to get the new latest and greatest equipment, some of the new stuff, and then our, our goal was to try and get the best of the golden era equipment. Everything old school that you can't ever find anymore. I recognize yeah. some of the hammer strength stuff right? that you're starting to see leave the gyms and be replaced with these new new equipment that's just not built yep, the same. It's not. So everything in this room now is plate loaded only. This is the last division that we did over here. And so now we put all the cardio equipment over there and then a whole plethora of old school stuff. Nautilus Gen 1, chain driven. Those pieces are like 52 years old. So it seems like yep. you're constantly adding new equipment. Like where are you finding some of this older stuff? So. There are pages we watch all over the world, and whenever something becomes available, we either have to bid on it, or we just add it to cart and we are done, <laughs> so. Uh, no hesitating, huh? Yeah, it's kind of a, it's a bad, I don't know. It's a good but bad addiction that I have. I know, you're equipment, always so. flipping equipment, I see yeah. you guys. Moving stuff in and moving stuff moving out it all in, the moving time. In fact, we're building a new piece right now. It just came in this morning. So uh, is this a hamstring? This is, uh, so this is a reverse hyper machine. So it's plate loaded, it's by power lift. Another old school gem. The girls are gonna love this piece, but load it up Kick here. Kickbacks for yep. glutes and yep. legs, huh? Yep, so if you come over here. Bay number three, man. <laughs> Cable machines. Um, Lots of body masters in this gym, so I'm a big fan of body masters. So you'll see them all over the place. The cable to pull down, the power rack here, the pec deck, bathrooms. Little restroom. And yeah. Like, it's like you guys added a the lounge. Cybex Sisters is probably the best hack squat in the world, I think. It's this guy? Yeah, super hard to find, but boy, it hits right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I recognize so, that one. That's the one I think most people avoid. Yeah, because they know it's going to do damage. Like if this you thing, these walk things out are hard. Here, don't use that machine. Uh huh. You know. Then I put these in what just a week ago. These Cybex pull down, the Cybex row. Okay, these so are pretty back hard section. to find. Yep, couple back machines in here. They're plate loaded too. Yep. Cool. Those Nautilus explode pieces. You got the pull down there, and then you got the chest press has an adjustable back plate on it. Nice. Those Explode series are probably worth their weight in gold. They're pretty impossible to find. Hmm. And What's then, your vision for this thing? Is this thing close to like where you want it to be or do you still just, it's always evolving? Honestly, I'm kind of running out of building. I've only got 2,500 more square feet to go and I got the whole building. Yeah. But this is our chill room. So if anybody wants to turn on the 75 inch screen and watch Netflix and chill or whatever. Um, this is the theater room, so they That's can cool. turn so on. So, this whatever. is open to all your members. To this is open to everybody. This is open to everybody. And then, this is what we did with uh, the office back here. We ended up doing screen printing. And Russ is working on it right now. So, he prints all of our shirts in house now, saves us a little time and money. So, That's cool, we can actually dude. keep up with the process now. Nice, man. So, well, it's been pretty fun to, like I said earlier, watch you run with this and turn your passion into a, a business. Yeah, happened fast. For we sure. kind of, I think we were kind of on that same path in the same time where we both kind of like found our careers and just right. ran with it. Right. But, uh, definitely. 
do, how would you say like hunting and fitness for you kind of go hand in hand? I know you're a big oh, hunter yeah. and probably live off the meat. Hunting is, I mean, next to the gym life, you know, training my competitors, hunting's my other life. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a pretty big ranch up there that we, we run. And so my boy, you know, keeping him occupied and it's hunt, hunt, hunt every single day with him. And so we got to go coyote hunting nonstop and I got to be available for him on weekends to do something to do with on the mountain. Uh -huh. You know, he's feeding the deer this morning. And so I'd say that the most I can do while I'm at work is keep the hunting channel on. Mm -hmm. And so it's on over there. I don't really care what anybody else thinks, but the hunting <laughs> channel is always going to be on. <laughs> that's kind of funny. That's a <laughs> that's a topic that these guys went and covered last week. Actually, we did a whole video on feeding the deer, and I know the property you guys have up there is same, covered in snow. Yep. Are you guys feeding there? Or? Yeah, we are. So we've plowed out a road that goes up on a north slope, uh, and we feed every day uh, a couple bales, and then several bags of that like pellets of the pellets yep dude interesting man we might have to link up with bronson and maybe go get a close look at that and see it's pretty cool we have the one spot we have about 75 80 deer coming in and we can get from me to you to them. yeah so well if you guys haven't had a chance to see um on our channel it's just called feeding deer um it went live on sunday go check that out super cool film and it's super close to his neck of the woods same type of mountain range so yep. similar situation just again highlighting like the harsh winter we're having out west and what some of the even private landowners are doing out of pocket to help with the deer but appreciate you uh giving yeah, us man. a look at the gym yeah. we're gonna just take some photos to promote the new shirt he was nice enough to invite us down and have us and like i said i walked in with the camera and i was like man i'm even i'm nervous like to be in here with cameras like <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> it's like not, not my comfort you zone you know put me on the mountain but yeah appreciate it man you bet. A job well done. I think, uh, what is this dog doing, dude? Check out that thing. What are those dogs called? Those were, that's the one that's like, Bernard. yeah, famous in some of those movies. Dude, I haven't watched movies forever. It's a big old St. Bernard. Some of those movies? Some of those, like, I couldn't name them. What's the ones with the big St. Bernard's? All right, Matt's putting the seatbelt on before we get uh, before we get dinged in the new elevation. All right, that was fun. Okay, tradition when pretty much anybody is down and we do anything work related, go buy these guys lunch. We always go to Mobetas. That was fun, man. I know this is different, like obviously the feel, but I think. The last, I don't know, pretty much since Mountain Ops, I think there has been kind of a, a bridge connected to like health and fitness and hunting. And I know we get a lot of crap for it, or people do get a lot of crap for it, I'd say online, like social media. But it's kind of goes hand in hand, if you ask me. The two really do work together. If you're in shape, you can go hard in the back country. And if, if you like to hunt, obviously you're harvesting some of the cleanest, most organic protein out there so to me they go hand in hand but i hope you guys enjoyed just a quick tour of um bronson's gym it's the butler pro gym right here in salt lake look it up if you guys want to come check it out but now we go eat chicken and steak and mac salad and rice and refeed <laughs> let's go Well guys, we're gonna grub this, like I said, refeed after our, our big workout session photo shoot. Again, kind of out of the ordinary for us to, to go to the gym and do a vlog, but hope you guys enjoyed it. The other guys have some good stuff, so we'll bounce it over to them. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget the uh, Tech Hoodies launching probably the first week of April. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the next video.